Hey y'all, this is Revive Guide, aka Multi Multimedia, and I'm going to show a different way of N64 platform type controls. As you'll remember from my last tutorial, I used a non Python method using with keyboard controls, but uh, but in order to to do that, needed an 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 extra object floating around that the character pointed to. This one doesn't need that, but it does take some take a couple of Python programs. Now, that game you've seen me working on, Little Dave, or whatever. A lot of a lot of things are going into it. Some programs uh, I found and uh, sometimes modified, as well as Logic Bricks. But uh, really, the the heart of this is the the movement. And although the as for the Python, I may have started out by looking up code, but with some tweaking. It sort of became my own. So, and first of all, again, we're going to need a collision box and a character. So, this is how I'm loading the character. It's called Velo Move because I don't know what that was about. Anyway, this uses uh, linear velocity, which is the only way the other Python works properly. And uh, not only that, there was some trial and error. You see, the thing about linear velocity is that it, it keeps a character going at a constant at a at a constant speed. And, and he never falls. Yeah, it just keeps on going. And uh, so I set it so that there would always be the Z velocity, so that however he's going up and down, keep doing that. And uh, also, effect. Two, yeah, two. Some of these took some trial and error. Basically, what this does is that it'll uh, turn the character in the direction towards the towards the direction the collision box is moving. So let's start with our collision box. Better yet. Actor. Always turn on actor with these things. Change the collision box to dynamic. Actor. Set it to well, I guess whatever you want. I like cylinder, just have a round collision. And let's start putting in our joystick controls. Let's see, I need to call it axis. I've heard that you have to have true on, but it seems to work regardless. All, all events for axis. And now let me just make sure the the 
the numbers for the joysticks here are correct because this may have been used uh, before I got an Xbox controller. Axis number one, threshold, oh yeah, don't forget the uh, threshold. If it's, uh, if it's all the way at zero, then um, it's not going, then uh, the character may keep moving, well, well let's just Somehow I always end up doing some kind of trial and error. Oh, oops. It's telling there. Yeah, I can get stumped by something as simple as. Um, yeah, there you go. You see my character sliding there? This is why you never leave threshold at zero. So, have up to, I think it was, 32,000 to work with, with. so let's say um, 2,000. Maybe you want to work with this, this later. Or would it? No, actually. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot. I just want to set the friction for, for both the ground and the character. Let's make a nice little green ground here. See how that turns out. Yeah, there's one friction for the ground, two for the character. This is just uh, experimentation. Yeah, it's more like it. In case I have any doubt that there is momentum in these characters. Now, it's uh, Add ourselves the character. Oh, first, let's prepare the cube. See, we gotta have a yeah. Our, our character, our object uh, is uh, is made up of sort of points. Obvious, obvious to any 3D users I know. So let's just um, better yet, let's we just put a ring in the middle. Select two dots here, press F, make a line, and then subdivide that line, and then choose the dot in the middle. Now, back to object mode. I would use a armature for the character with a character parented to it, but uh, just to keep this tutorial focused, I mean, you can look up uh, armature characters just about anywhere. If, uh, uh, anything about platformer style movement is much more rare. So, let's create ourselves a character. Let's make it less confusing. Let's just call him. Uh, just call him Guy. Or girl, whatever you like. Remember to remember to turn off his turn off his physics. Uh, otherwise, yeah, that happens. Something like that. No collision sensor. Just for the sake of experiment, let's try ghost. Having a physical object that is uh, incorporeal might be might be useful uh, for can be detected by sensors. But uh, this is something I've never tried before. Here's a guy. He's selected. Hold down shift. 
select your other guy, I mean select your collision box, go to edit mode, and then, yeah, your dot, one dot is still selected there, so, control P, and make vertex parent. Now, call that's name our code box, by the way, and uh, so we can tell these guys apart. Let's also color him. You know, uh, I always color my color my thing characters blue. Let's go with red. This one. So let's. Uh, Change our collision box switch on invisible and there's our guy just by his lonesome. And now let's uh, apply our other Python. Oh, fun fact though. If you select uh, two of your characters at once, uh, just watch. So, our Python code here. Uh, let me just uh, check on our code here. It says, uh, okay, so uh, there's, uh, it doesn't, I don't specifically name the, the, the sensor, so. No need to change them here. So let's just uh, take our sensor, access sensor, from our collider and connect it with uh, Python from our main guy. It's the beauty of this thing, how you can uh, just mix up the boxes there. So, let's see how we did. And there you go. Some proper joystick movement right there. And no need for an external arrow. And this, uh, and uh, naturally, this is in fact what I am using to, with my little Dave thing jig. Now, uh, as as for the as for the camera, add an empty to your your collision box. Same way as you did the, the character. And what we're going to do here is parent the is parent the camera to the the empty, let's call it center. Choose a camera, let's shift, select center, just regular old control P and object mode. Now let's just try and do this in the camera, right? <clears throat> Switching my wife, let's see where they are. By the way, switch points to local, so you see the objects and the objects uh, axes. Hmm. 
Scene actuator. Set the camera as camera. All camera. Always. Oops. Anyway. Let's go to center. Oh, there's one thing I. There's one other icon. Uh, open. Yeah. <clears throat> this looks like we are using the see what yeah what I was uh, what I'm doing for little Dave is uh, turning the the camera from the at the center from side to side but turning the camera itself up or down. But uh, just for the sake, just for the sake of convenience, I'm going to change. I'm going to set it to the camera to move all around from the center. Oh, and uh, this, you have to name sensor two stick, or else it like this, or else it won't work. Oh wait, I forgot to set the voice down. Okay, wow. Not only uh, did I uh, leave my lecture file without saving it, uh, and then had to rebuild the thing from the ground up, but as I was recording the last parts where I... Uh, Um, where I put in some camera con where, I, where I put in some camera controls the the my screen recorder just shut down without apparently even saving me putting that there but but so I'll just give a quick little rundown of, of what I did yeah we have this sent we have the center object which has the camera parented to it. Each one of these has a little code. The center has some has some Python code to turn side to side. Uh, which is which by the way the the axis number is three. Side to side. Now instead of uh, Putting a up and down turn turning for the center, which would simply have uh, have the camera move all around his scalp. I just wanted to be able to look and look up and down. I took the camera and I have this separate code. This is three. I mean, yeah, it says three here, but on axis number here it's two. By the way, always turn, make it true, so that it'll always be working. Connected that there, and I even, I even put to, attached to always, an orientation constraint so that it wouldn't be turning forever. And uh, do some trial and error. I said so that it's the direction is y axis, apparently, and the reference direction is 1, max angle 45. Just a sort of, sort of just a little margin there, just out of experiment. But, but apparently, the way that how it turned out, to turn the camera up, you push down. So 
can let me know how you feel about that. Let's see what happens if I change the reference direction, point it the other way, minus one. Oh, flips it around. Yeah, this thing's kind of finicky like that. Anyhow, that's uh, that's how that's how we, uh, we how we did it, uh, and uh, now we have a proper sort of free-moving character with a freely moving camera. Uh, aside from jump controls, uh, but you can just look that up anywhere, but. Actually, let's uh, let's try doing that right now. Joystick just said to button. Tap. Button zero seems to do it. And better yet, let's try having a double jump. Uh, oh yes, have a. Jump property. Danger. Jump. Is. Three. Then add state, the second state. Well, I'll show you what that is in a second. Also set it to add to the jump property and collision with the ground. Set jump to zero. Now that second state here. Set initial state to one. Let's go to the second state. Yeah. Set it to always be going up as long as that state is, is there. Let's just see what works. And also set it so that. Oh, here's a here world feature. You can make this, uh, make anything appear anywhere, any brick appear anywhere, by putting down this pin. So, here's the. Call that, call that A button. Now let's set it so that for NAND, which means it's not going, this state will be removed. I also set it just uh, even when you're holding down the button do about a fraction of a second Actually, no, let's not do that. Let's uh, have that uh, let's have that collision thing. Let's change NAND to NOR. It's like it's like OR except do the opposite. Anyway, it's not. So, 
Seems a little experimental, so let's see how it goes. It's uh, a little more thrust to the engine there. You probably didn't see it, but uh, it was in fact a jump right there. Let's just uh, press I here so that the end of debug properties, I guess. Oh, there we go. You can see the number going up each time I press the button. Let's just uh, ramp off this hill here. Probably couldn't tell, but um, kind of stopping myself from falling briefly. Let's try even more. Because I said it's the... See that? It just kind of hung up in the air for a second. Yeah, it's like I'm going, going higher. Well... Unfortunately, that's just uh, how I'm at right now. Because of uh, the, I said it's that letting go of the button in those of state, it may not be noticeable, but. At least what's supposed to happen is even if I lightly tap the button, it, uh, it uh, will let go. And even if I lightly tap the button, I'm just hoping. That it won't go as high if you like to tap the button. Anyway, at the very least, I have a, I have a jump and uh, I can sort of hang in the air for a second. I can sort of hang in the air for a second. Anyhow, that's where I'm at. Take it or leave it. I hope you enjoyed my little lecture on my. I uh, attempt to do uh, free platform movement with uh, modest software where this sort of thing is rarely done. Uh, I will uh, link, link in the description for the forum post where I'll be putting this video as well as the Python code. Anyhow, I, uh, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, enjoy your day, and bye. Okay. Okay, it just occurred to me, the way I set this thing up, even if you're mid-air, you can double jump, whereas if you simply fall from somewhere, you should only be able to do it once. So, the way this should be set up is that, uh, okay, here's your collision, and which means that if you're not collided, set jump around to the number right before the third jump, in this case two. Don't ask me why it skips from zero to two with the first button press. Let's see. So there we go. If I simply fly off, it goes right to do, and I still press jump one more time. I can still double jump from the ground. I am really having fun here. Forget anything? Well, yeah, okay. I guess that uh, covers the basics, the bare bones. Uh, so, look forward to updates, including uh, uh, 
a visual effect I've been working on, more little Dave updates, and an upcoming tiger mask. Uh, <clears throat> it'll be a, a nice, nice uh, little haven from your daily routine if I can ever get the thing finished. Seriously, I should be making uh, like short films or something with how long these are taking. Anyway, hope you all had fun. See you later.